Hey guys, how you doing today? I'm Gilbert with Interactive Utopia and today we're going to be doing another uh, project, uh, another tutorial, trying to help you create a React TypeScript project uh, using that's going to be using Webpack as the builder uh, and it's going to have a Babel 7 loader uh, to make your application backwards compatible. All right, without you having to worry about anything. So, uh, first thing that what I'm going to be doing, open Visual Studio Code. Uh, in here, I just created an empty folder. As you can see, there's no files in there. And, uh, and yeah, we're just going to go ahead and get started. We're going to open a new terminal. First and foremost, we want to check that our node version, uh, it's the latest. In, the, in this case, it's 13.6.0. You can go to Nodge.js website and confirm it. All right. And uh, once you make sure that uh, you have the latest version, then, you know, we can continue. Uh, first, you know, we have to initiate our project or React project with a TypeScript template. So you can do this very easily by using the NPX uh, create React app uh, command and then we're going to be uh, creating the app in the current folder and again we're going to be using the TypeScript template all right so uh, right now it's going to be doing its thing it's going to be taking a couple of minutes uh, so I'll be back in a couple seconds all right guys All right, guys. So now that um, Node did its thing, uh, we can start adding or uh, other dependencies to the project. All right. Uh, so again, you know, right now we have a simple React application uh, using TypeScript uh, instead of JavaScript um, for the programming language. And now the next step would be to add that application and add Webpack to it so that it can function as this builder. All right. So uh, we need to install Webpack uh, globally. And then save its dependencies. All right, we're going to do let Node.js do its thing again, uh, installing all the required files and give it a minute. All righty, so now that it's all done, um, we're going to have to install the Webpack uh, CLI, the command line uh, interface. Uh, so for that, we're going to be running npm install development, and then we're going to do webpack CLI. All right, and then we're going to give it a minute to do its thing again. Um, just has a lot of dependencies that you have to install before you can actually use everything, uh, you know, so that you can that you're able to work on it. So once the CLI it's it's um, it's installed, then we're gonna take it to the next step, and we're gonna be installing some plugins. I'm gonna just copy and paste the, the code in here because it's a little bit long, but I'll go ahead and explain it. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be installing first the web Webpack Dev Server so that we can run or application on a local server you know so that we can test it out and work on it uh this is going to be the actual webpack development server not like your regular node server uh so uh so again you know we have to install a special dependency for that uh we're going to be installing the html webpack plugin the HTML loader, uh, which it pretty much it, what that's going to do is usually webpack is just going to create your JavaScript uh, file 
But with this, uh, pretty much is going to create a, a web page that it's going to be loading your JavaScript file so that you can actually see the application uh, and not just have the the final file. All right, so we're going to go ahead and run the code and let Node.js do its thing, installing everything. We'll give it one minute. And uh, yeah, after that, we're just going to be installing some loaders. So the way that Webpack works is that depending on the file that you're using is going to need a specific loader so that you can pretty much read it and give you a final uh, copy of it. So uh, we're going to need, for example, in this case, um, we're going to be running npm uh, install and then uh, what we're going to be run installing first just get the, the name of it real quick. We're going to be installing the TS loader. This loader. So this is basically just a transcript uh, loader, uh, but we we're going to be using Babel in, in, you know, for the project itself, but at least we can have its dependencies so that we have something to fall back on if Babel is, is not working properly. All right. Going to copy and paste a couple of the dependencies. So this is going to be um, npm install inline source map. Just let him do its thing for a minute. Alrighty. So once that's installed. Uh, the next one that we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing um, the CSS install CSS loader. So the reason why we're doing this is again because you know you're going to have different types of files. You need to include one uh, a loader for each type of file. If not, you're going to get a, a uh, compilation error at the you know once, once you're trying to get everything together uh, in this case we're adding this the CSS loader HTML loader transcript loader because uh, we, we use the uh, template that's given by by react and in there when you go to your source file then you try going through something like your app the TSX you see you have HTML uh, your logo it's gonna be um, uh, is an SVG file, so that that needs a loader as well. It has CSS, uh, you know, here's your logo, and then here's your CSS. So you need a loader for all of those ones. So that's pretty much what we're installing. If you make the project from scratch that you're not using the template, then you don't need to be adding these loaders. You just need to be adding the loaders that you're going to be actually using. But again, in this case, since we're using the template, then we want to be running whatever's already given to us, all right? So uh, we install the CSS loader, and then uh, we can do, we need to, to install the SVG URL loader. There's two uh, loaders for SVG files. One's going to be a URL one, and one's going to be an inline loader. So depending on what you're doing, if you're actually adding the SVG code on your page, then you use uh, inline loader, SVG inline loader. But in this case, since we're pulling it from another file from a URL, then that's why we're using this uh, loader, SVG URL loader. All right, so we're gonna let it do its thing. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. All right, so now that we have all the loaders that we need for Webpack, uh, what I'm going to be going ahead and doing, I'm going to be adding all the Babel, depend Babel dependencies. Uh, in this case, we're going to be installing uh, Babel loader and its core. Uh, give it, let's give it a minute.
and then we're going to be adding some dependencies to it uh, which in this case you know we need the TypeScript preset and some plugins uh, in order for to make it work for a react TypeScript project so let's give it another minute all right then now we need to install Bevel runtime so give it another minute And then finally, we have to install uh, one more plugin for that runtime. Let's just give it a minute for it to do its thing. All right, guys. So now that we have everything installed, then we can go ahead and start coding our project. We start giving it its configuration. Uh, you know, right now, out of the box, even though all the node modules and all the dependencies have been installed, we haven't told uh, our application what to do. So that's where we're going to go ahead and get started. All right. So uh, first of all, we're going to have a new script uh, for runtime, which is going to start our development server. And then pretty much what we're going to pass on web, web pack dev server. So uh, once we run npm run start dev, then that, that's going to be starting our uh, Webpack development server. All right, guys. So um, after this, we need to create a new file, uh, our Babel configuration file. And uh, we need to pretty much tell it that we would like for it to work with TypeScript, if possible. <laughs> it wants to do us a big favor. I'm just going to copy and paste this, uh, but pretty much, you know, we're just uh, letting it know that uh, it's going to be handling TypeScript and then that it is TSX files. And then we're pretty much attack attaching the plugins that we're going to be needing for every needing so that it's working. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and save that file. And then lastly, we need to create a webpack configuration file and then we need to pass in the information uh, pretty much it's it, it's configuration and I'll go over it right now I'm just going to copy and paste the one that I'm that I normally use and I'll have all this uh, on the github uh, project so if you need to copy and paste it then um, you know you can just do that uh, it's pretty uh, generic so you just need to make it work to what your project uh, needs are. All right. So first, you know, I'm just going to go over it real quick. Uh, pretty much our entry point, it's our index.tsx file, which is under our, our source folder. So that's pretty much where the whole application is going to start from. Um, the loader, uh, again, it's going to be reading uh, TypeScript files and JavaScript files and the rules that we give it is uh, if you're, you're reading a TypeScript file then use Babel loader uh, in here you can again just change Babel loader to TS loader and then that would be the standard uh, webpack loader that it ha they have but in this case we're using Babel loader that way we can make the code uh, backwards compatible uh, we're giving it a rule for the CSS so that it uses the CSS loader and uh, for our SVG files using the SVG URL loader. All right, so that's pretty much what we're telling Webpack to use to handle our files and our code. Then our output is gonna be uh, exported to or a folder named build and then the actual file, the JavaScript file, we're going to save it into JS folder 
forward slash bundle.js. So that's going to be our final export. Uh, we're using one of the plugins that I've mentioned before to create the, the HTML web, web page that it's going to be displaying that code. Uh, we're going to be going to, to that pub, to the public. Uh, we're going to be using, I'm sorry, the the template that is provided by React to us, which is on the public folder, uh, index.html file. This is just uh, the template again that's provided once you use the the create React app uh, command. And um, we're creating an index.html file on our build folder uh, using this the the public index.html template, uh, which again is going to display. It's just going to add an extra script tag in there to to make the code run. <clears throat> and then we're telling the uh, development configuration, the dev server uh, configuration uh, as well. Uh, pretty much, you know, we're letting letting you know uh, where the application is going to be exported to normally, uh, and then we're running it on um, on port nine thousand. All right. So that should be it for it to work. And then we can go ahead and do something like npm run start dev. And if everything is proper and working properly, we should get an actual live application. All right. So the project is running. It compiles successfully. So I believe we have launch off. And yep, here you go. Uh, pretty much. It's running out of, it's not running through or um, through uh, our normal React uh, or Node.js no server, but instead uh, it's pretty much being fully independent. Uh, if you want to make a build, uh, what you can do is just run the command webpack. And then we're going to give it a minute and then it, it pretty much... Uh, compile everything that we needed and now as you can see we have a folder named build with an index.html file and a js file I'm sorry an, a js folder with a bundle.js file which uh, if we go over to node.js we can always go open the file Gonna go ahead and try to find here. No, 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 no. Where did I project files now? Here we go. Have a lab. You can see I'm working on a couple different projects. And here we go. Build index.html. There we go. So this is running locally. It's not using any server. Uh, it's fully uh, backwards compatible. Uh, and then there you go. You're good to go. All right, guys. So I hope that answers uh, you know that your questions. I hope that it helps you to build your next project. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. Uh, if you need any development help, uh, you can go to interactiveutopia.com, and I'll be more than happy to assist you. And uh, yeah. And until next time, have a great day.